2020 has demonstrated the real dichotomy of black life in America. From the murder of George Floyd to the disproportionate impact COVID-19 has had on communities of color, we've seen how much further we still have to go in helping bend the arc of the moral universe towards justice. Even at a time when Jim Crow and the Ku Klux Klan spread hatred and violence across black communities across America, brave black men and women signed up to serve their country trailblazers like the first black man and women ambassadors, Edward Dudley and Patricia Roberts Harris, who had no choice but to fight for their civil rights at home. But they went on and they selflessly dedicated their lives to fighting for the rights of those beyond our borders. As the first African-American chair of this committee, I know firsthand the importance of representation. This February, the House Foreign Affairs Committee is celebrating Black History Month, and we are honoring the tremendous contribution of Black Americans to our nation's diplomatic and foreign affairs related work. Now, this past year has shown us just how important it is that we have diverse voices in our government and hopefully in our diplomatic corps. We understand the importance of Black leadership on foreign policy because Black history is American history. Uh, it's a rich history. It's an important history. And it's one where people uh, can connect through their own struggles as Black Americans to issues of equality, of fairness, of equity. Diversity is a unique source of strength for American society, our economy, and our national security. But in the same vein, when structural racism and implicit bias hinder opportunities for a diverse workforce, particularly for Black Americans, our national security actually suffers. I've always said that America's diplomats should look like America. Yet, a congressional report found that only one in three, that's right, only one in three State Department employees are people of color, and only 15% are African American. The higher you climb the ranks, the worse the problem becomes. As an immigrant and a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, it is deeply painful for me to think how many talented diplomats have been passed over or denied the opportunity to promote United States interests abroad due to the color of this year. People of color bring different ideas and perspectives to the table as informed by their lived experiences. As someone who fled a civil war, oppression, and someone who belongs to an oppressed class in the United States of America, I know the struggles of people around the world yearning for equality, yearning for justice, and yearning for freedom. When I started there at the State Department, there were not a lot of people of color, certainly not in leadership roles, and it made it hard for me to imagine a career there. It made me wonder whether or not this was really a place that I could thrive and be able to continue to contribute to our country. When we reaffirm our commitment that every position of public trust, and in, in particular, our diplomatic corps, the face of our country to the world must reflect our nation's rich diversity. And we have a lot of work to do because there's not a lot of diversity overseas and there's not a lot of diversity in our State Department. We need to be investing in programs that facilitate a more diverse workforce and that enable Black Americans to pursue diplomatic work. From increasing recruitment at historically Black colleges and universities and Hispanic serving institutions, to establishing a mid-career entry program specifically for candidates of color, to providing greater career opportunities to the State Department's most diverse workforce, its civil service workforce. I'm really glad to see this effort now to really just make sure that we have that diversity, that we have that kind of leadership to showcase the fullness of America's greatness and its diversity abroad. I look forward to leading with our American values, including our wonderful diversity, and restoring our place in the world. That we will be able to ensure the diversity that we need to have so that when we are celebrating Black History Month next year, we'll be able to celebrate a very diverse State Department. For me, I believe in the three Ds, diplomacy, democracy, and diversity.